Hello guys, and welcome to Arcanum. Arcanum? I think it's the Arcanum. Of Steamworks and Magic Obscura. I think I got the name right. I think I got it right. Um, so this is as a result of the poll that I uh, made a video about. That I also... Um, yeah, let you guys vote on for a month. And I did not expect Arcanum to win, to be honest. But I'm glad it did, because I'm very interested in this game. Now, there are a couple of things you can notice here. First of all, the loading screen was fucked. Um, then also, the, uh, the intro scene was very cropped. Or letterbox is the right word. That's because I'm using some mods and patches that let me actually run it at a decent resolution, which... Um, yeah, I prefer. So, um, yeah, there we go. Uh, using some high-res patches as well. Uh, they're very easy to find, just, yeah, I don't think I have to explain any of that. So, let's just get right in there. This is a role-playing game by Troika, um, that a lot of people claim is, like, the best that's ever been made. It's, uh, yeah, it's a huge world, there's a lot of quests. Of interesting dialogue as well, I must say. Uh, I have not played a lot of it. I've played like a couple of hours. Kind of dug it. I was very interested in it, and I think there was just a whole bunch of a bunch of other releases which uh, made me stop playing at that point. But I always wanted to go back to it. So um, yeah, that's why I put it up in a vote, and here we are. So uh, let's go for a new game. Let's make a new character. Alright. Um, I'm gonna play as a female. As a female elf, because I think that might be interesting. Um, yeah. If you read the race text there, um, a lot of people don't like elves, apparently, and I think that might be interesting. Um... Generally, they're kind of weak, but they have otherwise pretty good all-around stats. So, yeah. Um, you know, what's my name going to be? Guess what? Um, as for character portrait, I don't know. There, I don't think there really are any great character portraits, so... I guess I'm going to stick with that one, even though I don't like it, but... it's not much I can do. <laughs> um, then... There's backgrounds, which can give you all kinds of bonuses, but they're always pros and cons, so... Um... Yeah, I haven't actually quite decided what I should pick, or if I should even pick one. Yeah, I don't... You know, this one's like, yeah, you get a good starting sword, but... Any negative? is really, really negative. I don't know, I don't know how, how I'm going to play this, so... Hmm... Lose dexterity, gain a bonus persuasion. Could be interesting. Also, I have to say, I love the music. Hmm... Knife thrower, no. I don't want any of that. Hegel skill can be useful, I guess, but I'm kind of thinking about this one. You, well, you know, it says it has its own combat system, and this just makes fewer criticals, but they are more extreme, which, you know, can re can work or can totally screw me over. So yeah, I don't know. Same with extreme personality. It's like yeah, but people either love or hate you might be interesting, but I, I think that may screw me over being an elf, because dwarves will just immediately hate me then, I think. So, yeah. Hmm, bully. So I kind of want to play this as a melee character, but more of a focus on, since I'm an elf, I'm go I want to be very dexterous, but I still want to also dabble in magic, but 
I have no clue on that, so uh, that'll probably come later. Hyperactive army training. I think that was... Um, bonus to strength, okay. Bonus to bow and melee skill. P penalty to dexterity, though. But that's losing one point, gaining it somewhere else, and gaining bow and melee skill. I think that's a very good contender. So yeah, there's tons of interesting ones. They, there's different ones specific for certain races, and... Um, yeah, there's just a lot of interesting ones, like this. Curse with trollish looks and mannerisms. Yeah, that's just cool. But not the way I want to play. <laughs> hmm. Strength, dexterity, all combat skills. No, basically no intel. Yeah, no. I think I've just gone through just about everything. And I'm going to stick with the army training, I guess. Because I know I'm going to need to fight. So, yeah, there we go. So, then we get to the character screen, essentially. So there's alignment, you know, good and evil. Um, then there's the stats, which are strength. I'll give you a moment to, you know, pause to read what it does. Because uh, I'm, by, I'm by no means an expert on this, so... Uh, constitution, kind of what you'd expect. Um, then there's dexterity, which you need for... You know, melee skills. You can actually see if I hover over them. Uh, these are just my combat skills, yeah. Um, they require dexterity to use, so dexterity, very, very important. Um, then there is beauty. I'm not exactly sure how that works, but I'm sure it influences people's opinion on you. Um, so, you know, the more beauty, the more positive reactions in general, I'd say. But I, I'm not sure how important that is. Uh, then there's intelligence, mental power, um, yeah, which you basically need. Combat skills need dexterity, and I think not, not thieving skills, social skills, technology, no. Uh, yeah, th th this is basically all the spell colleges, all the spell spells that you can get, which are a lot, so I'm really not sure. Like... Minor, you know, the healing, uh, necromantic white, as it's apparently called, the healing tree, and the generic damage uh, tree is probably what I'm going to be picking or something, I don't know. Or this one seems interesting as well to me. Being able to charm beasts, yeah, seems interesting, but I don't know how effective it is. Countering the magic, there's technology as well. Which has its own, uh... As you can see, you need intelligence to level this. Let me just... Check... It doesn't actually say. Great. Uh, right, so... Uh, magic needs willpower. That's right, I, uh... I, I, I read up on all this stuff in the manual, which is bloody long. Uh, a while ago, so I'm not, you know, up to date. <laughs> um... So yeah, there's willpower then, which uh, actually raises your fatigue as well, I believe. Yeah. Affects haggle, contributes to hit points, fatigue, and certain spell resistances. So willpower, extremely important for, uh, for mages. And then there's perception, you know, noticing traps and uh, ranged weapons, you know, good stuff. And then there's Charisma, which is basically working together with beauty, I'd say. Uh, and Charisma is actually something I'm going to dump another point in. Uh, I've learned that much from uh, playing the beginning a couple of times. Um, so yeah, you can persuade characters and... Now, if you have enough Charisma, you can get certain, um, you know, dialogue options, which uh, certainly are going to be interesting or useful. So... Yeah, let's get 9 dexterity, because I actually want some melee skill. 
Um, yeah, just I want this much melee skill because, you know, I, I it may be a really dumb thing to do, but playing the beginning bit and having no melee skill, I will just miss, 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 miss. So yeah, I'm just going with that, and I'm I'm kind of tempted to get some persuasion as well. Because I think that might be interesting. It might lead me to, you know, interesting situations where I might be able to talk my way through stuff. Or, because that very much seems the kind of game this is. So in general, I'm weak. I don't have that much health, but I have decent looks, and I can somewhat swing a sword, or you know, a melee weapon. All right, let's go. Took long enough. Alright, so then it just dumps you right into a shopkeeper for some reason. Always find that a bit weird, but it works out, it works out. So, I have 400 gold. Or coins. I'm probably going to be calling it gold as I'm used to that. Um, so let's get that sword, because that's pretty decent. Pardon the uh, little breaks as I'm doing nothing, but I'm actually coughing, so... Just muting the mic. Um, so yeah, it just gives you a dress. Um, right, what I first wanted to say is, uh, if you look at the stats at the bottom, there's a speed, just how fast you can swing it. Uh, so that's important, obviously. Uh, then there's D, which is damage 2 to 9. Uh, combined with your strength, probably, they'll do some ba you know, calculations in the background, and that determines the damage. And then there's FT, which I think stands for Fatigue. Because weapons can also, or just do, fatigue damage. Which, um, basically if someone runs out of fatigue, uh, like spellcasting takes up fatigue. Um, you know, if you cast too many spells, you get knocked out. You just run out of fatigue and you just drop to the ground. And that's basically it. That's basically it for you, so... Going for fatigue instead of damage may actually work out in a way. Um, I don't know. I don't know. May maybe later in, uh, in the end game it does. Uh, in the beginning it certainly doesn't. So, um, yeah, it gives you a dress. AC armor class of 2, damage resistance of 1. Now, what I tend to do is grab this one. And obviously sell that one. Um, so, you can also see that there's. This r small robes as well, as opposed to the normal robes. Um, that is basically for. Hmm, which were the smaller race? There, were, there is there are small races and there's big races. Like there's just uh, like half giants, which you can actually be. Those are I'm pretty sure are a big race, and they have their own armor because you know. Uh, a tiny person can't fit the same armor as a giant. So. Um, That's a pretty cool thing, but it's something I'm probably going to screw up at at some point. Like I'll just want to get, I'll want to get that, for example, and I'll just grab the small one, and it won't fit. So it's probably going to happen. I'm going to grab some boots. Obviously, there's rifles and all kinds of stuff. Hmm, these gauntlets are too expensive. That sucks. Gauntlets are actually uh, pretty good. I can get a hell. No, I can't. Never mind. I'll grab some potions. Alright, I think that's about it. Save so us about 50. I don't think there's anything else I can really get that's going to be worthwhile. No. All right, go. Again, it's letterbox because this is the original resolution. And I'm going to just shut up now.
help. Help me, please. Oh, thank you, my friend. I haven't got much time. <coughs> you must find the boy. Find the boy and give him back his ring. Now he will know what needs to be done. <coughs> Now listen, listen to me. We had to do it. He did unspeakable things to us, and we, we had no choice but to do as he said. And there are so few of us left, but the work is almost finished. And then the evil, oh, you can't imagine. He's coming back to destroy everything, everything and everyone. Please, just find the boy. <coughs> Tell him that I escaped. I came back to warn. <coughs> he will know what to do. You, my friend, it's all up to you. Can't believe it! I mean, you and and then the zeppelin and, and the fire, and the altar says that. Do you have any idea what all of this means? What the? So yeah, this is actually what the gameplay is going to look like. Um, as you can see, the UI is kind of cut off there, but you know, it, it's workable. So this guy just walked up after this giant crash, and he starts mumbling like that. Um, what the hell are you going on about? You speak! I, I mean, of, of course you speak. What am I, a blathering idiot? Wait, what, what did you say? Maybe I should be writing all of this down. Um, also you should uh, actually be reading this yourself uh, as well, because they, uh, they obviously put things that the character is doing that you wouldn't necessarily hear. They will actually say that in the dialogue, basically. Like, his jaw just drops open, you know. Stuff like that. He fumbles in his pockets, you know. Um, emotes like that. They will uh, always just do that. And it gives a lot of context to how a person is reacting or what they're doing. And it will give you a better idea of if you should trust them or not. So you should always just read that, because... Uh, this initial bit is actually, you know, voiced. A lot of it won't be, and I, I don't, I'm not gonna read both sides of the story like that. That's too much. Yeah, especially now, since my voice is still uh, kind of fucked. But um, that would not help. I, I don't, I, and I don't do voices. You, you know that, guys. I don't do voices like that. So, um, yeah, let's just go. <laughs> um, yeah, what the bloody hell are you talking about? Out, out with it, dude. Out with it. I am at a loss here. I, I, I don't quite know what to do. Uh, I mean, you are the... the well, of course you are. I mean, you do know who you are, right? Of course you do. What, what, what sort of brainless, half-baked question is that for the... the, uh, the uh, what, 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 what do you call yourself? Eterna? I know I I do know who I am. It's Eterna. And yeah. Uh please sir, slow down. And tell me what it is you're saying. Please, forgive me. I'm making a bloody mess of this whole affair. Yeah, sure. My name is Virgil, madam, and I'm new to the Panari religion. Uh your religion and I Oh, oh, wait. Uh I uh hereby dedicate No, no. Uh Commit my life to the Living One. I, Virgil, am at your service, madam. What the... Uh, huh? Um... I don't mean to be rude, but I'm just not who you think I am. Sure, I'm, I'm a living person, but I'm not the Living One. I'm pretty sure. Yes, yes, of course you're not really him, just his reincarnation. I, I mean, that is the case, right? I have to admit, I'm no expert in elven philosophy or, or, or prophecy. Bloody confusing, you know. All those these thous. <laughs> not 
Not that it's not interesting. Um, <clears throat> As I said, there's a lot of interesting characters and good, good dialogue. This game is great for its dialogue. Uh, Virgil? Yes, right. Uh, just give me a moment here. You, you see, the Panari, that's the religion that was formed around the things that he said. I, I mean, that you said. Oh, forget it. Let, let's start at the beginning. Or this beginning, since there is a lot more that came before this. You are the reincarnation of a powerful elf who the Panari worship and whose name is, uh... Eterna? Right. Yes, uh, the name. Uh, wait. I remember something. It is written in the scriptures. The living one will live again on wings of fire. No, 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 wait. I think it says, reborn on wings of fire. Oh, blood and ashes. Why do elves always have to be so damn cryptic? Uh... So, reborn on wings of fire, as in surviving a blimp crash in, you know, a fireball. Okay. Um, do the scriptures speak of a dying gnome and a ring? Hmm. I don't know about the ring, but this business about the evil one returning. Oh, as I've said, I don't know a whole lot about the Panari prophecies, but I think you were supposed to return and fight someone evil. Ah. Uh, Bloody hell, I should know more of this. Um. Yeah, if this is confusing to you, imagine how the bloody hell I must feel. I would like to clear up your confusion, but I am new to the Panari religion myself. I must bring you to meet my mentor, Elder Joaquin. He can answer your questions. He is in Shrouded Hills, a town at the base of these mountains. Alright, um... Well, there's no point to ask who the, who he is. He's his mentor, so um, let's go to Elder Joachim and straighten this out. The path out of here leading down to Shrouded Hills is down to the southeast. We'll stop by the Panari Shrine on the way out. See if it makes any of this any more clear. We should look for any other survivors before we leave, though. What do you think? Uh, agreed. Though there aren't actually any, so... Um, I know, actually. Why is it not? Oh, there we go. Um, I know there's no other survivors, but there's a couple of things that I just need to do around this area. Um, I would also like to equip my boots. Thank you, game. So that camera I just picked up, you'll see why. You'll see why. Uh, so there's a couple of things around this uh, blimp crash area. Also, uh, combat. I, you can basically set it to turn-based combat or fast turn-based combat or just straight up real-time combat in which things go way too fast to control or for you to do anything, basically. So, um, yeah, Virgil's actually just a priest-ish cleric. Uh, he heals us and himself. So he's very helpful to have around. So let's, uh... You can just see, I just did two HT. I'm exactly sure what that means, but... This boar stunned me, which is... A bitch. Um... So yeah. Missing. I've got 70 chance to hit, I mean, come on. So... You can actually see, the, the boar has collapsed. He's got minus 5% fatigue. So, yeah, he just collapsed, and now we can just finish him. And because he's just lying on the ground, we have 120% chance to hit. And there we go, our very first kill. And he, Virgil, just healed us. So yeah, the, the blue bar is our uh, fatigue over here, which will uh, very slowly regen. What is this? It seems a strange flying device, but much smaller than the blimp. I've never seen anything like it. Uh, well, it looks a lot like the machine which attacked us. And isn't that an ogre among the wreckage? It seems very unlikely that an ogre would have the intelligence to fly such a complex device. 
Yeah, they didn't really. They pretty much destroyed themselves in the attack. Flying into the rudder and... Uh, not the rudder, the propellers. It's just like, what? What are you doing? Do you see that strange amulet that he's wearing? And that symbol on its face? I don't recognize it. Do you? Hmm, considering I haven't seen it, but I'm gonna say no. Ah, uh, something isn't quite right about all of this. I don't remember the, uh, scriptures talking about flying ogres and the like. We'd better get to Shrouded Hills and find Elder Joachim as soon as possible. Yeah, agreed. And be careful. These wolves are none too friendly. But they're very friendly. So, I didn't actually pick up the, uh, the amulet. Which I think you have to. So there's an eye and a hexagram. Uh, also, you can... There's two, basically two inventories. Like, I'm examining this ogre now. This is actually his inventory. And if I click here, you know, these are his items that he has equipped. Which is very important to always check on characters. Oh, Virgil's decided to go attack this boar. So, HD is health damage. I'm, I'm not sure what it stands for, but the FT is uh, fatigue, at least. It's of an HT. I, I don't know where the T comes from. And I just lost some fatigue myself from, you know, swinging my sword. And a wolf. So... Now, it's only because I took two points in uh, melee that I'm actually, you know, I've got a 68% chance to hit if you look at the uh, targeting. Uh, I don't know what what that is supposed to be, really, but uh, and I'm not sure what the light was doing there either, so. Um, but yeah, otherwise you got like a 20% chance to hit or something. Like, horrible. So that's what basically why I do it. So there's a cave here. With all kinds of sewer rats. But you don't do a lot of damage, you know. Starting area. Oh come on! Two misses at 60%. It's bad. Thank you. So they just... F they're fleeing now. They saw one of their buddies, uh, you know, get killed right in front of them, so... The AI decides to run. Because, you know, it's frightened. They got their morale back, it seems. God damn it. Now, if I keep missing like this, nice critical hit there. Uh, yeah, if I keep missing.